A reading from the book of Judges. All the citizens of Shechem and all Beth Milo came together and proceeded to make Abimelech king by the terebinth at the memorial pillar in Shechem. When this was reported to him, Jotham went to the top of Mount Gerizim and standing there cried out to them in a loud voice, Hear me, citizens of Shechem, that God may then hear you. Once the trees went to anoint a king over themselves. So they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree answered them, Must I give up my rich oil, whereby men and gods are honored, and go to wave over these trees? Then the trees said to the fig tree, Come, you reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Must I give up my sweetness and my good fruit and go to wave over these trees? Then the, said, then the trees said to the vine, Come, you, and reign over us. But the vine answered them, Must I give up my wine that cheers gods and men and go to wave over these trees? Then all the trees said to the buckthorn, Come, you reign over us. But the buckthorn replied to the trees, If you wish to anoint me king over you in good faith, come and take refuge in my shadow. Otherwise, let fire come from the buckthorn and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Fair boom domini. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. O Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. In your victory, how greatly he rejoices. You have granted him his heart's desire. You refuse not the wish of his lips. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. For you welcomed him with goodly blessings. You placed on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked life of you, you gave him, length of days forever and ever. Lord, Lord, in strength, the is Great in his glory is your victory, majesty and splendor you conferred upon him. You made him a blessing forever, you gladdened him with the joy of your face. Lord, Lord, in Dominus Fobiscum, et hum spiritu tuo, Lectio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matteum, Gloria Tibi Domine. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. 
He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more because each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last ones worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. Verbum Domini. We are in the section of Matthew's Gospel and his teachings about the parables of the kingdom. And today we have the one that's unique to Matthew's Gospel about the landowner sending, sending laborers into his vineyard. I asked Deacon Jerry, who works in accounting here, for any good accounting stories on this. But uh, you started talking about money, it loses its humor pretty quick. <laughs> but. Uh, you too, go into my vineyard. This is an energetic landowner. We hear a few verses later about the, forum, the foreman, and he's not sending the foreman into the marketplace. He himself is going into the marketplace to find laborers. There's an energy, there's a dynamism, there's this great need, this urgency that he feels to hire, to hire laborers. God is at work, he's calling in calling us to vocations, to personal vocations. He wants to share his life, this inner dynamism, this uh, fullness that he wants to give us. This is versus standing idle in the marketplace where we can very much be paralyzed with sin, with worldliness, being caught up with the things of this world, with lethargy, with self-centeredness. I'm just looking at my own needs and wants and slowly dying there in the world, flailing. Versus you go into my vineyard, my kingdom, doing my will, being under my dominion, <clears throat> experiencing my lordship over you. <clears throat> He's calling us to a relationship with him, <clears throat> to experience his love, <clears throat> his love and mercy, his life, to have a life that bears fruit, that's a that's part of the fruitfulness, that mysterious fruitfulness of God, experiencing his fullness. That's his vineyard. That's what it's like to work in his vineyard. He personally calls us. <clears throat> uh, the, the laborers today would, would meet him. They would hear his voice. They would look into his eyes. He calls us, you. Yes, you. I want you. I have a special work for you to do. You are to make a difference. You have a vocation, you have a calling. You're called to belong to my kingdom. That invitation, that event of experiencing Jesus is issued to all of humanity and he passes into our lives and calls us. We're told today that the laborers are paid a, the usual daily wage, a denarius. This is what a man would need to earn every day to feed his family, and it's uh, considered a just wage at that time. But the twist in the story is that all the laborers, no matter at what point of the day they go out, whatever watch, you know, he goes into that marketplace to call them. The day was divided up into watches. We see that the last will be first, the first will be last. There's this equal pay. There's this 
free gift. It's not by the logic of the world. He's doing away with man's justice in a sense and just giving freely, super abundantly. Human justice is a call to give every man his due. In America, we have a legal system, we have a court system, we have contracts to make sure this happens. Teams of savage lawyers to descend upon whoever <laughs> who doesn't fulfill contracts. We know we see that uh, aggressiveness. And for life, for human life, for natural life, we have material needs, shelter, food, medicine, etc. But this parable of the kingdom is speaking about something deeper. We need more. We're made in the image and likeness of God. We are a unique creature of God's visible creation, made in his image and likeness, made for him. We can only find fulfillment in him. We need something more than the material. We need to be liberated from sin, from original sin, from personal sin. We need to be liberated from self-centeredness. As Pope Emeritus Benedict would say, we need a liberation of the heart. And God's love reaches our heart. It speaks to our heart. He gives us grace to free us and to feed and nourish us. So it's more than a denarius. We need grace. When Jesus, with Jesus, he bears the weight of sin for us. And he gives us a share of his life for us. We're told in Romans that the just man, I'm sorry, again, Pope Benedict, in meditating upon this passage, he says that the just man dies for the guilty one in the logic of our salvation according to God's plan, that God has paid for us the price of the exchange in his son, a price that is truly exorbitant, much more than any earthly wage. He's giving his life for us. So this is leaving human justice for divine justice. This is leaving uh, the world of self-sufficiency to discern and accept uh, God's love, you know, his mercy, that we are, where we become debtors more than creditors, that we have received more than we could possibly give. Romans uh, 3.23 says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as an expiation for his blood, by his blood, to be received by faith. This gift of salvation, freely given, we receive it by faith. That initial justification offered to us in Jesus Christ cannot be merited in any sense. When a person is baptized, he's he receives it in faith. He hasn't merited. Now, in our Catholic theology, we have a sense of merit that after that initial justification, we can truly merit in a fullness, in the full sense, through God's Spirit working in us. But that, that first gift of salvation is always purely a free gift. The last shall be first, the first shall be last, meaning that it's not earned. It's just given to us out of his love. We see after this parable of the kingdom, Jesus makes a passion prediction. He says, behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. That's immediately following this, uh, this parable. The laborers complain that we bore the day's burden in the heat. We have not bore the day's burden in the heat. We have not paid the penalty of sin. Jesus Christ has done that for us. He has done that heavy lifting. He has done that work of our redemption. And that paschal mystery, the fruits of it, the gift of the Spirit that he merits for us, is lavished upon us, is given to us freely. And he personally calls each one of us to live in that power, to go out into the vineyard, to go out into his kingdom in a sense, but also to go out into the whole world, to transform it by God's love, by living according to his, 
his law, by his beatitudes that he gives us, that drives us, that energizes us, that motivates us to go out to be part of this transformation to further the kingdom, to be laborers in his vineyard. Because of what we've been given, we're called to share and to give ourselves.